You're supposed to fail. Failing is, all failing is, is learning. This, you know, one size fits all philosophy didn't work. There's two things you control, what you eat and what you do physically. Everything else in the world, the weather, your friends, the work, your kids, you don't have a shot, okay? You only hope you have some control in all those categories of your life, but the two you control will save your life. Hey guys, welcome to The Bo Show. Today, my guest is someone who I would rarely bestow the title of guru onto, but today we're gonna do it. It's fitness guru and one of the most influential and innovative people in fitness and health, it's Tony Horton. How are you, brother? Tony Horton's here? Oh, hey, that's me. I'm great, Bo. Thanks for having me on, man. I'm fired up. Oh, thanks for being here, man. This is such an important episode because we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on this channel, millions of people constantly looking for inspiration, that next thing that's gonna get there. However, what I'm seeing is people are not taking their health seriously. They're not taking mm. exercise seriously. They're not taking that frame of mind because for me, it's you need to take care of this body so you can live long enough to see your empire built. So I just, from hearing from you, I'd love to know, and you can tell these people, uh, there's no one better to say it, the importance of health in just not just running your business but running your life well you know it's interesting I there's a lot of entrepreneurs out here in California you know it's like sort of the land of entrepreneurs right and I see so many people with their nose to the grindstone working so darn hard to build their businesses you know because it's not easy being an entrepreneur you're not working for the man this is you you're you're covering all you know all the territories when it comes to making sure your business grows and you're absolutely right a lot of people are sort of skipping the the exercise and diet portion of their life, right? And a lot of them aren't getting enough uh, sleep, they're stressed out, they're dehydrated, you know, they're on the go, so they're eating garbage food. You know, I can only speak for myself, but I've, I've seen a lot of people make that shift where they begin to understand the importance of exercise and eating right, and they understand that how that improves the quality of their life tenfold, above and beyond the, the, the aesthetic purposes, you know? I mean, we all wanna look good and, you know, have a good shape and be able to function on this earth, but. The reality is, is when you exercise, it improves memory and cognition and, and sex drive and uh, productivity and, you know, it's across the board because it's not just a physical thing. It's a mental and emotional and for some people a spiritual thing. And so for me, it comes down to behaving in such a way, exercising in such a way, eating in such a way so that it, it, it affects your energy and enthusiasm for who you want to be, what you want to do and how you want to accomplish this journey of being an entrepreneur and so when you're overweight you're typically overwhelmed often because you don't have not only the physical but the mental and emotional capacity to be able to build the business that you want to build you're very 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 successful in your field but not only that you're you're an entrepreneur yourself and guys tony knows what he's talking about so if he if tony speaks you listen and what i find astounding is you had the biggest uh selling uh, fitness program of all time, P90X, um, P90. And what I just, what started you from who you were to get you onto this journey going, okay, I'm going to be in this business. I'm going to be making people becoming the best version of yourself. Well, a lot of people hear this story and they think, really, is that really how it happened? But you know, I was not an athletic kid. I had two left feet. I was picked last for every team. You know, I wanted to be a good athlete. I just wasn't, you know, I didn't have good teachers and coaches and mentors. You know, when I grew up in the 60s and 70s, back on the East Coast, a lot of the coaches back then were just sort of gravitated to the natural athletes, kids that were just sort of better at it than I was. And so I was left, you know, I was left in the in the wings, hoping, wanting, wishing, but just wasn't achieving. Um, everything changed when I came out to California. I mean, I did a little weightlifting class in college back at the University of Rhode Island, and I liked the I liked the teacher. He was unique in the sense that he wasn't a bully. And uh, he really took his time. He, you know, a lot of the teachings that I do now, a lot of the way I disseminate my philosophies, men methods, and techniques stems from the way he would communicate with us. He had a sense of humor. He made it fun. Like never in my life, I'm lifting weights, right? I'm doing push-ups and pull-ups and curls and squats and deadlifts and all these different things. And I looked forward to it, unlike my experience back in high school. And so that was sort of the spark, you know, that was the centuri, as the Japanese say, you know, that sudden moment of enlightenment. Then I came out to California and the lifestyle out here was just different. You know, I mean, it's sunny 323 days out of the year. So people are skiing and surfing and playing volleyball. And there's, you know, there's all the tracks everywhere, local high school tracks. And, 
And I, and I joined World Gym, which is where Lou Ferrigno and Arnold Schwarzenegger were spending their time. And I would cheat and spy on them, you know, taking notes from those two guys. But I also had a friend of mine who was a track athlete, so he showed me a lot of the a lot of the stuff that would happen at the track. So I started doing that. And I was still playing tennis and some golf and some other things. But I just noticed early on, unbeknownst to me, that I wasn't changing my brain chemistry as a result. I didn't go into it for that reason. I wanted to be buff so I could meet chicks. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that was it. And that's what most guys in their 20s do. You know, all right, if I work out, then I'll have more confidence and I'll meet ladies. But it turns out you also need a personality. Huh. Hmm. So I was an actor, too, at that time. And I was doing my improv classes and my scene study classes. And I attempted stand-up for a couple of years. That was fun. And um, nothing like getting booed on a stage at 2 o'clock in the morning with four people in the audience that are so drunk they don't even know where you are. But it thickens the skin, my friends. And uh, that was all part of my early days. I would go to, I was a member of four different gyms at one point because I like the variety thing. I mean, if you look at P Power 90 or P90X, X2, X3, all these programs have created 22-minute hardcore and, and many others, is there's a ton of variety in them. It's not just weightlifting. It's not just bodybuilding. It's not just cardio. It's not just martial arts. It's all of the above because it fo forces you to work on your weaknesses. And back in the early days, I was only doing that partly. I'd go to Pilates and yoga classes for the ladies. But I was learning a lot at the same time. And I was going to, you know, World Gym with Lou Ferrigno and Arnold Schwarzenegger and other bodybuilders because I wanted I wanted that aspect of my fitness as well. So I was trying to prevent boredom, injuries, and plateauing, which is what happens to most people, which is why they don't get the results that they want because they're doing this myopic thing, this, you know, one-size-fits-all philosophy didn't work. And so that was it. I was – I didn't even know. I wanted to be an actor. I wanted to be Jim Carrey and, and Tom Cruise all wrapped in one. You know, but uh, that was hard. So I wasn't able to accomplish that. But because I was working on the comedy and the improv and the scene study stuff, I was getting uncomfortable. I was getting comfortable in front of a group of uh, people, in front of an audience, in front of a camera. And so the fitness thing just came out of the blue. Uh, a friend of mine uh, worked for Nordic Track, and he's sort of seen my journey. And he said, I'd love you to come up to Minnesota, um, up there in Minnesota, you know, and shoot some stuff with Nordic Track. And you know, I could walk and chew gum, which, you know, I was, I had a fitness background, plus I could, you know, read the teleprompter and do two things at once. And those were the early days for me. Then I, I did, I was in the uh, Thighmaster commercial, if you can believe that one way back. No way. Suzanne <laughs> Summers, you know, a real high point in the career. And, um, you know, and then, uh, and then Carl Deichler, this now the CEO of, of, of Beachbody, you know, we became friends early on through a mutual friend. And uh, before you know it, I was doing this thing called Great Body Guaranteed, which was my first real on-camera instructional workout series. And I was a little stiff back then. All right, everybody, here we go. We're going to do curls now. And one, you know. And then, you know, Carl got to know me. And he said, why don't you bring out your personality? Why don't you just go nuts? And if you go too far, <laughs> we'll do another take. And all of a sudden, everything clicked. You know, everything clicked. Power 90 didn't have it so much. But when P90X came out, everybody went like, wow, who's this fitness clown? This guy's out of his mind. And it worked because of the variety. Number one, it was already ingrained in who I was as a trainer with a lot of my celebrity clients. And, um, and then the, the modifications. No one had really showed people one, two, and three ways to do a particular exercise. You know, it's like a progression. Instead of everybody in the back being perfect, being tan, nobody's sweating, and everybody's nailing it, you know? We got real people who've been through the test group, who are behind me, who are hating me, cursing me out, and struggling. And everybody at home went, wow, this feels like the real deal. And, you know, I don't know how many millions of copies later, but quite a few. And so that was the, that was the journey. And now you're here talking to me. <laughs> how oh, you're a stud. Come on, brother. Now, what I think is not just your journey, but people can take away something into your story there. Variety. Well, so many people hit plateaus and they get kind of, they get disheartened. And by having that variety, changing the way they're doing things with the main goal in mind, would you say that would, is quite necessity in the entrepreneur lifestyle? Well, you know, if you look at a lot of entrepreneurs, I think the ones that are most, ex the, are most successful in the end are not afraid to reinvent the wheel. You know, because everybody follows a formula. Okay, if I follow this formula, I'll be successful. Well, maybe that formula worked for somebody else before you, but that not, might not be your technique, your strategy, or whatever it happens to be. It might not be your method. So, you know, you got to think outside of the box as an entrepreneur, you know, and if something don't work, don't do it again. You know, you might want to try another angle, you know what I mean, when it comes to your process, when it comes to dealing with the people who you work with or, you know, whatever kind of creative process that you're in. I mean, you really have to kind of look at it and say, all right, what is unique and special about me as an individual? Like, how do I look at this thing? What is unique about this product 
or this process or this course or whatever I'm trying to create that is unique to me. And most people sort of have a tendency to stray away from that. They try to, and it's okay to emulate, you know, that's not a big deal. Like, you know, you look at Tony Robbins or Elon Musk or anybody who's amazing in the field, you think, okay, I'm gonna take a piece of that. I'm not gonna take the whole thing because that's not, the whole thing's not me. But I'm gonna take a piece of what Tony Robbins does. If you look at who I am, I'm a combination of Tom Petty, Billy Idol, Andrew Weil, Deepak Chopra, Gary Zukoff, you know, my uh, my college uh, fitness coach, I go, oh, I, I like that. You know, I like that. I like that phrase. I like that technique. I like that method. And you sort of, you know, you reinvent yourself. You're growing and changing and transforming over the course of years. I mean, you know, you don't want to you don't want to behave and act and uh, proceed with whatever you're doing the way you did 10 years ago, because it's probably stagnant and old and old fashioned and antiquated, right? And so now what you wanna to try to do is, okay, what's new, what's fresh? What are the kids doing, you know? Uh, what do kids want? Do the research, you know, understand who your demographics are. And there's a lot to do. And oh, by the way, you're gonna fall down again and again and again and again. And it really depends on how many no's you can handle. You know what I mean? Let's say, okay, I'm gonna handle 100 no's today. And if you go in, if you go in that way and and you understand that the no's are coming because of there's something that you're doing that isn't working. So you gotta do something different. Einstein, whoever said it, you know, uh, insanity is repeating the same things over and over again and expecting a different result. Everybody knows that by now, it is uh, tried and true. So, um, and that's it. And, and, and exercise, where does exercise fit in that? It changes the way your brain functions faster. Truly does. Your brain is more capable of being pliable in situations that are difficult. And when you exercise, you're releasing norepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, brain-derived neurotropic factor. That's right, molecules and proteins coming together inside of your noggin, it changes the way you're gonna get stuff done. And without exercise, it's just, what, I can't, and then you repeat those mistakes over again and you eat a double cheese chimichanga and you wonder why you're taking a nap at three o'clock in the afternoon. I feel lucky that I, I can't eat that stuff because I don't know, I just feel like I, I need to fuel myself. And I know that my success in my life up to this point has been the turning point was when I got I took my health and, and fitness seriously. But a key point I want to kind of hit on what you just said there is taking bits and pieces of people to create yourself. There was a great um, uh, in the U2 documentary about Bono when he reinvented himself in the 90s and he took Jim Morrison's jacket and Elvis's glasses and this and that's how he became who he was. And mm. this channel as well, we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos top tens on like elon musk deepak chopper all these people i think billy idol's on there that'll be cool <laughs> right billy i trained billy you know right i heard it's, like billy. it's awful it's an awful impression everyone from england saying horton shut up with that hideous right it's more like tony we're doing shoulders and triceps today great all right Anyway, I apologize. I apologize to the planet. Oh, no, no, we we love it. He's uh, Billy Idol's <laughs> doing amazing for. He just keeps going. Just keeps going, keeps man. Keeps going. He, he performed at a big event that Beachbody did. He brought me up on stage. We sang Rebel Rebel Yell together. I mean, you know, drop the mic. I was done. That was just the most insane moment. But I trained him on and off for seventeen years. I I learned there's a lot of Billy in me, Ron. It really is. I just because uh, he's such a huge personality, such a mega talent. It was fun, fun times. Well, it's not. You've trained some incredible people. Like recently I saw on your Instagram, you were with Ewan McGregor, who's a national treasure here. We, we protect you and he's, he's very much loved in the UK. But you, yeah. the reason the, these high, big, well-known clients are coming to you is because they believe in what you do. They know what you can do. So guys, when I'm saying we've got Tony Horton on here, we want you guys to start your journey looking into his fitness programs, into his Living Large program and that. I mean it. And I, as everyone knows, I don't get people onto this show unless I really believe in them. So in that story, there's so many nuggets you can take out because your journey, again, you said failure is okay. It's you're going to fail. I, I, I know I fail. I think you're supposed to fail. It's the best bit. Failing is all failing is, is learning. They should just, we should change. We should, here's what failure should be. Every time you think of the word failure, think of awesome learning moments, failure, awesome learning moments. And so you gather that Intel, and you don't forget about it. You know, you say, okay, well, this happened and that happened and that phone call didn't go well and, and then you know, he broke the contract or, you know, whatever it is. Okay, so how do I do it differently next time? Or maybe you don't do it differently. Maybe you're just dealing with the wrong people. I mean, honestly, it's, it's really a matter of persistence and determination and a work ethic and having a purpose and a plan and, and re, 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 reverse engineering things sometimes. Like I wrote that up in my book, 
uh, the big picture. Like if you're going to go to Mount Kilimanjaro, right? How do you like? What's the process to go from? Oh, I want to go climb Kilimanjaro. Okay, well that's in Africa. I live in you know the United States. So what do I have to do? And how many months in advance? And who should I bring with me? And you know, you see yourself at the top of the mountain, right there, just arm in the air. Here we are, you know, snow all around you. What did the day before look like? I mean, you know, you won't know exactly. You can't predict the future, but you can have a general idea that it's going to be how many steps or yards or meters or whatever it is between the top of the mountain and before and the day before that, and the day before that and the camping. And then you figure out well, how much, what am I going to bring? What kind of conditioning am I going to do? It's going to be 19,000 feet. You Google all that stuff. You know what I mean? You talk to people who've been there and you just kind of break it down before you go. So it's not as intimidating. It's the same thing as building your business. Like you see, maybe for some people it's just, you know, X amount of dollars or something, you know, net profit or something like that. And you say, okay, X amount of dollars, well, who do I got to talk to? What do I got to do? And reverse engineering things hypothetically is a brilliant way to, to build your confidence when it, when it comes to, you know, moving forward, regardless of how many times you fall down. People, there's gold in this interview. Keep watching. Gold, I'm telling you, and silver and platinum, damn it. <laughs> Start digging. Well, you don't need to dig. It's all on the surface. But right. uh, a few people found out that uh, I'd be talking to you today. And a lot of them were kind of one of the big questions, like my good friend, Ben, he's like, he lost a ton of weight uh, because of, of your programs. And he was very good. And he said it would just, he's now started a CrossFit gym in Miami and he's doing incredibly successful. Awesome. And, he, and he's trying to inspire more entrepreneurs and he's got a big following. And one of the things he asked me to kind of, if I could get, draw it out of you was, um, and it's probably one of the easiest things you've, you know is what small changes one or two that people who've never been into this lifestyle could start to do to start to change their life well i would say number one is i think the reason why a lot of people aren't successful with their fitness is because they wake up in the morning with the greatest intentions in the world but they haven't really planned what it is they're going to do and what time they're going to do it and so you know i tell people to go buy a wall calendar and stick it up someplace where you're going to see it every day your bathroom mirror is one your refrigerator is the other one, and then maybe the back of your front door. So it just stares you in the face. And prior to the beginning of any month, you just write down in your own handwriting, okay, Monday I'm going to do plyo, Tuesday I'm going to do shoulders and arms, Wednesday's going to be cardio. You know, you just kind of write them down, and you write down what time you're going to do that. So you set that schedule like you do everything else in your life, and it becomes priority one because you understand that if I move physically today, I'm better today physically, mentally, emotionally. That's the truth across the board. I don't care who you are. If you're from Tanzania or the South Pole or you're 85 or you're 25, that is the universal truth. Fitness makes you better today because it affects the noggin and your state of get up and go better than anything else. And then you pro probably want to, and not for everybody, but you want to try to find somebody else to connect with when you do it. It's always, you're always more successful when you have a partner. Your husband, your wife, your kids, your neighbor, your coworker, whatever it is. Hey, come on, man. We're going to do this for, for 90 days. Let's just do it. We're done talking. You and me, we're going to schedule it. We're going to meet. I'll meet at your house three days a week. You meet at my house three days a week. The thing is done. You know what I mean? And so that is not rocket science. I mean, it's not like what I just said is impossible. You're not digging ditches and splitting atoms, okay? You're just scheduling a workout with somebody and you're showing up. And, and being awful some days and having great energy some days and having no energy some days. Some days you're strong. Some days you're weak. Don't judge it. Don't judge it. Stop judging it. You're judging it. Don't judge it. Enjoy the journey. And journey's the whole darn thing. That's the story. You look back and go, some days I was uh, awesome. Some days I sucked. Okay, so what? But I did it and I showed up. Number two, food. It's all about what you put in your mouth. There's a healthcare crisis in this country and there's other ones. I don't know how bad it is in the UK right now. It's bad. But it's because we can't figure out how to control our gob and our freaking hands. It's about the gob in the hands, and obviously there's something going on in here because there's a hole you're trying to fill with your gob in your hands. And what you want to do here is write that down. Make two lists and put them on your refrigerator. Foods that you intrinsically know that are healthy. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats. Put all of those on that list. And then you write above that list, you write, eat this, okay? And on the other side, you put all the stuff that you know is causing the problem. The Malamars, the double cheese chimichangas, the four beers at the soccer, at the, at the football game. What, put all that over there and you write, not this, okay? And then you see how well you do. And those two lists are there, right there. There's the good list and the bad list. And you, you know, you don't have to be, you know, uh, persnickety about it, but you want to try to, eat over here and not eat over here because if you do this and you exercise with your pal in 90 days, boom, that's ah. a 60 year old bicep, 60 year old. And there's his little friend over there. Okay. So aging is for idiots. It's for people who aren't willing to do the work to figure out how to get her done. It's that simple. And once you get that formula figured out, 
boom, like your friend who was like, oh, I'm overweight, I'm unhappy. Now I'm gonna do P90X, now I own a CrossFit gym in Miami and I'm a star. And that can happen to anybody and everybody because guess what, there's two things you control, what you eat and what you do physically. Everything else in the world, the weather, your friends, the work, your kids, you don't have a shot, okay? You only hope that you have some control in all those categories of your life, but the two you control will save your life. Actually, before we even spoke, one of the posts that I, kind of a motivational quote that I put on my Four Minute Masters page today was you can control three things. Ooh. What you, how much you exercise, what you eat, and what you think. You can control your thoughts. For sure, man, for sure, absolutely. absolutely. I like, I'm gonna steal that, I'm it's stealing yours. I'll send it to you, brother. What Tony's got on there, guys, is motion equals emotion. So by changing your physical state, you're gonna start changing how you feel. Like we are all familiar with the Anthony Robbins Superman exercise where you pretend to put on a cape and walk down the street. You're gonna feel a million bucks. It's just the way it is. So mm. if you're moving, get an accountability partner, someone who's gonna be there with you. Is more success that way. And the last thing is that you need to fuel your body right. And there's so many resources out there. And I know that uh, every program you do, it does come with a nutritional program to follow. Mm. So they don't think you're just going to be in the wilderness, in the wild, not knowing what to do. Well, you know, one little tiny bit I want to add to that. And, and it's interesting. Information is not enough for, for many, many people. For some people, the educational process is, is, a, is, is, a, is a direct line to transformation and success. But for a lot of people, there's just there's just too many mental and emotional and psychological things that get in your way as a result of a of a mind that doesn't doesn't uh, solve problems well because of lack of exercise. I mean, it's all about chemicals. You know what I mean? You look at people with PTSD and other other different things. Whenever almost anybody with any kind of ailment exercises and eats better. They're doing all kinds of, uh, John Rady's a friend of mine, he's written the book Spark, and he works with uh, autistic kids. And these kids are moving five times a day and they eat fruits and vegetables, man. There is no fat, sugar, salt, or chemicals, in anything they eat. And these kids, you know, maybe they're not super high functioning, but there's massive improvements purely as a result of what they eat and how they move. And that happens with almost anybody. So as a young entrepreneur, you know, you can go to every seminar, read every book, and do these different types of things. But if you really wanna go into turbo mode, then you eat right and exercise. It just accelerates your, 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 the possibilities. Would you say that the discipline that you earn, and you do earn it by completing like a 90 day intensive or something, that carries into your other actions in business and your kind of decision making and carves you as a person? It makes me less fearful. I'm, I'm a fearful scaredy cat without it. I truly am. I just feel like the world is overwhelming and, and nothing's going to work out and who am I and why am I so special? I still suffer from that, you know, at some level. Like whenever I'm sick or something and I miss more than two days of workouts, I get into a little woe is me thing. You know, I'm not here to pr pr pronounce that I'm, you know, Mr. Mr. Giddy up and get it done all the time. There's ebb and flow in my, you know, I don't know, sometimes it's barometric pressure and biorhythms and, and you know, not enough sleep and maybe too much salt in my dinner. I can't control a lot of the things, you know what I mean? But I can control movement and I can control hydration and I can control, you know, how much I eat. And when I do those things, the odds go up. And not every day is perfect. I mean, I'm not proclaiming that's gonna happen for anybody. I don't know who you are. But the ultimate goal here is joy, happiness, and laughter, really. I mean, it's joy, happiness, and laughter. I mean, what's the opposite of joy, happiness, and laughter? It's all those things that you don't want. Right? It's all the things that make you sad and gloomy and depressed and overwhelmed, <clears throat> all right? So if I move today, I, I can push that part of the way my brain might go uh, by by moving and eating well and um, and getting sleep and hydration. I mean, it's more than just those two things, but it's it's just basically healthy behavior. And so you want to up the odds because it's about joy, happiness, and laughter. That's well, what it's about. Well, I know for me, as someone, I I my life, I had a privileged childhood, and then in my early twenties, we lost everything, became homeless, and I succumbed to anxiety, depression, and the kind of the true meaning of like PTSD. I had a traumatic event, and I had stress from it, and. I didn't know what to do and it was through movement through exercise through yoga Pilates and that I found who I was again and I was fat bow and then I was squidgy bow and now I'm tone bow <laughs> but I'm, I'm happy with that because I love that. I love that. what it did for me was it realized I can control this so and then next thing I know my thoughts I can start moving my thoughts in the right direction and boom so from I think just everyone on this channel and everyone who's watching thank you so much for doing what you do in the world 
And I think uh, I just if one more person learns about it, two more people, it is going to change. It's going to change the world because someone's going to live longer. They're going to be there to see their grandkids, their great grandkids. They're going to be there to enjoy more suns. They're going to see more mm. innovations. Like every day, Elon Musk seems to be coming out with something amazing. Don't you want to be alive to see that? Uh, I do. I do, man. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be done at 109. I figured 109, I'm going to look like crap. You know what I mean, but uh, but but I want to try to go. I, I'm, I'm trying to go long. You know, I mean, I was I had about I still I'm still suffering from uh, uh, vestibular issues from Ramsey Hunt syndrome that I had back in October. It lasted about five months. It was a brutal time time frame for me, but it was the diet and the sleep and the hydration and the exercise that brought me back. Not 100 percent. It's one of these things that sometimes takes a year or more. Um, but uh, actually, there's a uh, an athlete, uh, uh, an English athlete, Lizzie Yarnald who won gold two years in a row has the same thing that I have. So, you know, I use her as an inspiration, one of your fellow countrymen that really inspired me uh, to no matter what, you know, 10 o'clock at night in Jackson Hole, it's minus four degrees outside. And I go, you know, I'm going to the gym because Lizzie won gold and, you know, in Korea, she's a badass. So she can do it. I can do it. And it really, you know, what inspires you? That's the most important thing as, as, as an entrepreneur. What keeps you going? What keeps that, that light on? You know, I mean, it could be anything and everything. And if you do the diet and the exercise, um, the odds for your success go way up. One more thing I want to say. If there's anything Tony Horton you're interested in, go to TonyHortonLife.com. Check me out. I'll be at the Omega Institute in, uh, in New York. Uh, Darren Aline, a great, a great event, uh, the two of us, the 27th through the 30th in San Diego. If you want to sign up, tickets are up for sale. I just got the link. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to read it because I want to get it right. The Paragon exp.eventbrite.com. That's the Paragon exp.eventbrite.com. It's going to be an amazing four days. Amazing speakers, rock and roll artists going to be there. They're going to jam. It's going to be fun. And I hear you're going to be doing your Billy Idol impression. So everyone's going to love it. <laughs> right, right. I know. I'm not. I was going to sing Rebel Yell, but then that'll be that'll destroy the, how great this interview has gone so far. Just so. one last question, and it's what we ask all of the best of the best. Uh, it's Evan's big thing. It's what launched Evan into stardom, and Evan uh, lives by his one word. And Evan's one word is believe, and he wants people to believe in themselves. He believes in himself, and unlocking that. My one word is incredible. I want to do incredible things. I want to be around incredible people, talk to incredible mm -hmm. people. Everything, my experience is incredible. Do you have a word that you embody and go, that's me? You know, God, one, you're gonna make me pick one? Mm, you know, I was gonna pick love, cause just love. All you need is love, bah, 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 bah. but I'd have to say humor, mine is humor. When I'm, when, I'm, when I'm laughing because of humor or I'm making people laugh, um, there's just, I just feel so present under those conditions. There was a great interview with the Pope and he said the two things that are most important for mankind is a smile and humor. And I went, oh yeah, I like that. So I'm going to go with humor. I've been smiling this whole, my face hurts from just laughing and smiling <laughs> this whole interview. It's, it's been one of my favorites. But guys, oh. we're going to put all the links below for everything and do check out uh, Tony's course with Brendan Bouchard, Living Large. It's fantastic. And Thank that, you. That's not just health and fitness. That's Tony's principles to how he uh, looks into success. So guys, I started with personal development. That's how I got going. I didn't get that in school. Personal development launched me into fitness and health and where I am now. So it's a course, it's really, it's a, it's autobiographical in some respect. You know, it was my journey from being stuck and, and, and upset about where I was going to making dramatic change. And it, it's a fun course. There's a lot of humor in that one too. Oh, it's, it's strange you say about courses because I used to be a rock musician and tour the world and now I'm interviewing gurus and masters all over it's very strange but i just go yeah. with it man but you got a great journey bo you're doing a lot of things this is a this is an amazing thing you're doing you're affecting a lot of people these these sessions with me and other folks that uh, are influencers in our world you know not everybody has access they don't have direct access to, to me you know they well, they have to come to events and different things and i don't get to talk this long like you know we'll do q a so it's powerful what you're doing and, and thank you for having me on well thank you very much and i'm just doing this because i want people to basically become the best versions of themselves and you could be one of those pieces that so ignite something in someone and they go you know what tomorrow i'm gonna not gonna have my big ass latte with my donut i'm just gonna look into maybe one of your programs and just start that's yes. all that's all we can hope for that's all we can hope for brother but guys thank you so much this has been the bow show as you can see we are on a roll with guests so tony any last words before we go bring it get some Live large. That's it. All I got to say.
I love it. Guys, we'll see you for another bow show soon. Okay, brother. Bye-bye. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Tony Horton. The guy's a powerhouse, and I had so much fun recording that interview. If you watch it again, you'll just see me smiling the whole way through. The reason I got one of the best fitness experts on the planet on here for you guys is because I want him to change your life like he's changed millions of people's of lives. Because the belief is if you can look after this, your body, and you can take care of this temple, that means you're going to have better control of your mind. That means it's going to alter your decisions and your finances, your businesses, your relationships, your entire life. And also, when you feel good about yourself, the confidence that you gain to go into the world, you're going to make decisions you didn't even know were possible. I really believe that we're put on this planet and we should at least at one point in our lives see the best version of ourselves. So why not physically become that best version of ourselves? The variety Tony talks about is not just weight training but also plyometrics, cardio, lifting weights, yoga, pilates, you can do some dance, whatever gets you going. But that variety is the spice of life. And by applying that approach to your business, a variety of approaches to a destination, you might knock on doors you never knew possible. The other thing I took away from this interview was Tony's one word. Tony's one word was humor. And humor is such a big part of my life because I know when I feel good and I'm laughing, it's impossible for me to feel bad and sad and negative and depressed. And I know that humor and exercise together got me out of depression and anxiety and PTSD. I know that got it out of me. So guys, I really recommend you start looking into your health, start eating better, start working out because you wanna live long enough to see the empires that you're gonna create. And also, start laughing more. If you want a quick laugh, go onto YouTube and look up those videos with cats and cucumbers. They always give you a laugh. So guys, I hope you took away something amazing from this. Just another part that's gonna turn you into the ultimate version of yourself. And you're gonna change the world by doing this. So, until we see you on The Bow Show next time, if you have any comments on this video, please put them below. I'd love to hear from you. If there's anyone you wanna see on this channel, just let me know, because I'm open to all kinds of guests. So have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world and we'll see you for another Bow Show soon. If you tell yourself a story long enough, you start to believe it. Once you believe it, you act like it. I have okay. tussled with a whale out of handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. Now you know I'm bad. Only last week I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean I make medicine sick. <laughs> the fundamental key to success it can take between 18 and 254 days of taking action for a new habit to stick. I've created a new course called 254 Confidence where every single day for 254 days I will be sending you a video between 30 seconds and 5 minutes long that you start your morning with around making you feel confident. It's absolutely free. Check out the link in the description below to get access.